I ran a high school basketball practice last week, and by the end of warm-ups, uh, the players were visibly tired. Uh, this isn't that unusual for me, as I've seen this now um, in several places, you know, different clinics in different states and even different countries, that just getting through a warm-up becomes fatiguing. And I'm not talking about a long warm-up, I'm talking about, you know, 10, maybe 15 minutes of warm-up doing uh, you know, very low intensity plyometrics, um, some running, uh, you know, a couple of change of direction type movements, some lateral movement, um, the basic movements that I think should be taught and trained every single day uh, to prepare players to play basketball. Um, you know, typically not worrying, especially initially, about the speed um, of movement, certainly not having them race. Uh, you know, to finish, um, giving them time to go at whatever speed they are, sometimes uh, having to take time to uh, teach, uh, you know, an exercise to, you know, one player or several players who've never tried a certain exercise before. You know, a lot of uh, children these days don't know how to skip. Um, so sometimes, you know, just teaching the skip takes a couple of minutes to, to try to get the rhythm of the step in the hop, step in the hop. Uh, so to me, it's not something that should be physically taxing, um, and there's enough rest uh, built in with the instruction, um, especially the first time I'm doing it with a group, um, and have to you know demonstrate and and uh, you know explain each exercise. Um, you know that there should be enough recovery between exercises that we're not getting overly fatigued, um, but consistently that's not the case, um, and it continues to worry me. Uh, when I go from gym to gym and team to team and, and organization to organization uh, and players from, you know, 10 to 18 years old are uh, struggling, you know, and getting tired uh, doing a fairly simple, uh, fairly slow uh, because of the initial instruction warm up, uh, you know, and it just makes me wonder what's happening, uh, you know, in physical education uh, with other sports with other practices, their preseason, you know, their off-season training, things like this, um, that a 10-minute warm-up can be fatiguing, you know, and that uh, players will actually ask for a water break after warm-ups, um, you know, before we've even really done anything. I mean, because to me, my warm-up doesn't end until we play a game of tag, uh, usually. Um, but in this case, uh, we didn't even get to that point. We didn't even move to a game of tag before players were visibly tired and, and uh, you know, asking for water. And so it's it wasn't, to me, the warm-up wasn't even finished yet and we needed to take a water break and we needed to take a break. So, um, you know, I think whatever level we're coaching and whether we're coaching uh, physical education or whether we're coaching basketball or any other sport, um, there needs to be more attention paid to the amount of physical activity and the intensity of that physical activity uh, that occurs within a practice session or a class, um, because if if you know adult children and adolescents are fatigued from ten minutes of exercise, then we have a serious public health crisis, um, and that shouldn't be a surprise when you look at all the statistics in terms of lifespan and obesity and so on and so forth. Um, you know, but sports should be a method to combat that, um, and if people are signing up expecting to get their physical activity through sports and they're still not getting any kind of cardiovascular fitness and they're not prepared at all to participate, um, you know, in a sporting activity despite, you know, attending practices or training sessions, um, then what are we doing uh, as coaches? Uh, you know, what are we doing with our practice time? Uh, so I think, uh, you know, more attention needs to be paid because we know children aren't playing outside as much anymore and physical education classes are being cut. So we do make need to make more of a concerted effort uh, to incorporate some conditioning and to increase the level of activity and intensity and in practices uh, to compensate for the deficiencies elsewhere in children's lives. When I played youth sports, our coaches probably didn't need to condition quite as much or worry about this because, you know, we'd show up for basketball you know, when I was in elementary school, we'd practice at 7.30 at night. Well, from uh, 3 to 7.30, we were probably outside playing for at least part of that time when we weren't doing homework. So, you know, we'd already done some physical activity before we even got to practice. Um, and now it seems like, you know, starting a physical, uh, physical activity 
activity, such as, you know, playing basketball, uh, you know, not only have they not done anything on that specific day, but, you know, you don't know how long it's been since they've actually been active. So uh, we need to, from a public health standpoint, we need to use youth sports to get children more active um, and increase the intensity of that, acti that activity so that a warm-up does not become taxing physically uh, to a group of children or adolescents.